In part one of this video series, I showed how Fairmark Travels had a secret scam call center to the rear of their premises. Fairmart are involved in pop-up scams and they also pretend to be Amazon. They will use both these sorts of scams to try and get money out of their victims. In part two, we saw the supervisor noting just how much money each of the scammers had made and this would determine their bonus. Their bonus payment was paid in cash. In the corner here is Amit Sindhu. He is one of three or four operations managers for Adra Technologies, or as they call themselves, Eleven Hub. He's not only responsible for handing out the bonuses, but also making sure that the scams operate as intended. According to Amit's LinkedIn profile, and I suspect this page will be removed soon, he seems to have been working in the company since 2015. But the person who sits at the top of the chain is also called Amit. On the left here is Amit Chayan. He is the CEO of Fairmark Travels and is the ex-director of Adrit Technologies. It's not clear why he's no longer that director, but he was until fairly recently. Indeed, Adrit Technologies still have Amit's email address as the contact email for the company. Once this video is released, undoubtedly Amit will try to distance himself from this company. But the scammers were taking payments, and I traced the PayPal payments directly to Amit. This is a screenshot from their PayPal page. It clearly shows that Amit Chayan is the Chief Financial Officer of Adratech, and his business was known by several aliases. Here you can see 24-7 Fix. And when the supervisors would log into PayPal, it was clear that their victims' details were also there. They would send invoices via PayPal so I could trace all of the payments from the victims directly to Amit. And the PayPal account showed that thousands of dollars were being transferred from victims in the USA, UK and Australia. And don't forget that this was just one of five different payment gateways being used by this company. When the payments came off hold, they were transferred to an Indian bank account. But Amit was very careful never to set foot in the scamming offices themselves. Instead, he would meet with the floor supervisors on occasions in his office in the main building. And it was in those offices that Amit masterminded some of the scams that his company would run. Here, in Amit's office, he would invite some of his business colleagues. The big guy on the bottom left is called Anuj and the other guy on the right is called Amar. Between the three of them, they run a company called Zcore Solutions, and here they're discussing some of the next scams that they're about to undertake. Fortunately for us, the only part of the building where the CCTV has audio are his offices, so we're able to pick up on these conversations. Most of it is in Hindi, but I've got a few people to help me with the translation. I've only highlighted the parts which are in English, so that it's easier to understand. The group discuss how many agents they'll need, how many days they'll work, what sort of commission they'll get, and ultimately what sort of scams they're about to operate. Until this point, they'd mostly been running pop-up scams, but here the suggestion is to run the refund scam and pretend to be Amazon. So the lesser the people know of this, it'll become our job easier. And not only was the work to be kept a secret, here they're discussing how they do the Amazon scam. The Amazon scam is becoming more and more common. They will send a lot of bulk emails and pretend to be a billing department of Amazon. The order will contain the victim's name, but of course it's all fake. They just want the phone call. When an agent receives this phone call, they will try and persuade the victim that they've got a security or hacker problem. And the way to get around this problem is to go and buy a card. They will describe this as a security card, but in fact the victim would be buying a gift card, the currency of scammers. If you're a patron of mine, you can hear some recent examples of some of the audio that I've captured where Fairmart try this scam. And to the outside world, Amit appears like a very successful entrepreneur. Last year, he visited Germany and Amsterdam, Singapore, New York, Las Vegas, Bhutan, Chandigarh, Thailand, and most recently, Sri Lanka. Around the Fairmart offices, he has profound quotes from the likes of Steve Jobs. 
And this is his birthday cake, which features parts of Amit's life. On the left here is his black Porsche. He has a real one. On the right are some iPads and other Apple devices. In the middle, a laptop. And on the right-hand side, lots of dollars. And to the right of all of this is his main Fairmart building. No mention of the secret one out the back. But all the time, his company are scamming older or vulnerable people. Uh, I have MS, and I'm just I'm a nervous wreck, and I have to, I can't understand a lot. So I'm listening don't real close. Don't. don't be getting nervous, Miss. Okay, right now you're in safe hands. Okay, that is the reason you're telling me that you won't live for the next year as well, right? Probably <laughs> not. No, no, no. Don't tell me that, Miss. I, I'm a diabetic, and I'm legally blind. Okay. Uh, and you know. I'm pretty. <laughs> Some of the phone calls that I listened into are absolutely heartbreaking, and that was just one of them. I have tried to report Fairmark Travels and Amit Chowan via the National Cybercrime Portal for India, but this portal just doesn't work. You're supposed to receive a one time pin to a mobile number, but it looks as if that part is broken, so I can't even report the crime this way. Instead, and only because I know exactly where the building is and therefore which police service and which district is involved, I reported the crime to the Haryana police. And initially when I submitted the report, absolutely nothing happened. I didn't even get an acknowledgement email. This was pretty much expected. I've never really had any response from any police service in India. So instead, I did something new. I reached out to a documentary crew in the UK called Panorama and I shared my material with them. They have much larger budgets than me and they even had the ability to travel to India to confront the owners and that's exactly what they did. There's a link in the top right hand corner to that Panorama documentary and I'll pick up in part 4 what happened whenever those videos and the documentary went live. But to reuse Amit's favourite quote, this operation can only work if it's run by a team of people. And one of the most important people in that team is Sahil Garg. He is the accountant for this company. And I witnessed the operations managers making their daily reports on how much money they'd scammed the previous day directly to Sahil. So I can now put together a picture of the key players in this scam. Top of the tree is Amit Chayan, and he is the director of Fairmark Travels and the ex-director of Adrit Technologies. The people that he plans the scams with are called Anuj and Amar, and between the three of them, they own two companies, Zcore Solutions and Capnerds Venture. Anuj and Amar independently have a different travel company called Travelometrix and a marketing division called A Square Marketing. They are also co-owners of a nightclub in Delhi called Rower. Amar especially posts lots of this footage inside the nightclub on his Facebook page. You have to wonder where all the money came from to buy a nightclub like this. And so back to the key players. One of the most important people here we've covered is Sahil Garg and he is the accountant for all of Amit's businesses including Fairmart and Adrit Technologies. The co-director of Fairmart is Asif Bat. It's unclear whether he has anything to do with the scams, so I've left his face blurred. The two people beside him in this diagram are Asif Trideri and Amit Sindhu, both operations managers for Adrit Technologies. And finally, at the top of the diagram is another director of one of the companies that Amit owns. Amit's wife Sonia is co-director of Capnerd's Payment Solutions. It's unclear what this payment solutions business does, but there is a similarly named Capnerd's Venture, which is owned by Amar, Anuj and Amit. Given their track record, it's hard not to believe this is associated with scams. But what about Amit's main business, Fairmart.com? Is it legitimate? Well, in 2019, they had a plainly fake address. They claimed to be at an address in Delaware, but when looked at on Google Maps, it was plainly a residential area and not an office location. But since the TV crew became more interested in Fairmart, they've now rented a different office address, 
this time in Denver, Colorado. I've been told that although they rent this address, they don't seem to meet there very often. But on Trustpilot, Fairmart.com seems to be doing pretty well. 80% of the reviews look like they're excellent, and only a small proportion seem to be poor or bad. But when you look carefully at these reviews, there does seem to be a bit of a pattern. Any of the good or excellent reviews seem to name every agent by name. And the good reviewers only seem to have ever reviewed just one company, Fairmart.com. The poor reviews, however, don't mention agents by name. The original promised fare is increased and it seems almost impossible to get your money back. So although I can't definitively prove this, I believe that Fairmart.com are internally writing their own good reviews and any poor ones are legitimate. But there's one thing that I am sure about and that's that they pretend to be the reservations for Delta Airlines. They've probably seeded their phone number to make it look as if they are the front desk for Delta. The following conversation was recorded in December 2019 and shows just how deceptive Fairmart will be. Thank you for calling reservations. So I'm going to help you today. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Randy. I'm holding a uh, Delta Sky Miles credit card. Mm-hmm. And I have a challenge here. I wanted to use Point to travel. Uh, I'm going for my residency for my uh, for my doctorate, mm-hmm. and I'm coming up short here on points. Um, I was told by mm-hmm. someone that you all can assist um, for those, you know, Delta Sky Miles card holders that you all might be able to assist me with some points to try and book mm-hmm. this flight. Uh, so I was okay. kind of. Sure, sure, definitely. So what I understood here is you would like to book a flight using your points, right? That's correct, yes. Definitely, so I can insist on that. So, okay, how many points do you have, sir? That's a good question. I think I have around 5,000 or so um, to book this flight. I, don't, I can give you my information if you like. Uh, that is fine, sir. I would love to check that for you. Can I have your uh, Delta Sky Miles I- number? Up until this point, this Fairmart agent hasn't given any indication that he isn't Delta, and he has no access to any systems which will allow him to look up the Delta SkyMiles details. So what does he do? Okay, 921. Mm-hmm. And can I have the password? And can I have the password? He's breaking the number one rule of any customer interactions. No legitimate person will ever ask for your password. This is a sure sign that it's a scam. Even the real Delta Airways would never ask their customers for their password. This victim is slightly taken aback by someone asking for his password. Do they normally give out the password? (laughs) Yeah, of course. Without a password, uh, you cannot log in. Okay. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, the password on this one is... Okay, okay. Thank you so much. I won't play the rest of this audio, but suffice to say, this agent wasn't able to log in despite having the right password, and there may have been security checks which triggered a blocked login. So even if Fairmart do call themselves a legitimate travel company, some of their practices are, at best, questionable. The reviews are certainly fake, and these practices of asking people for their passwords is probably illegal. I have passed on this information to the Delta SkyMiles team and hopefully they are able to take action against Fairmart.com. So we're going to leave part 3 with Luke here on the right chalking up just how much money he's made on this shift. When he writes it up on the board it should translate into a nice bonus for him. He, together with about 30 other scammers, have managed to scam upwards of $3 million from people all over the UK, US and Australia. He is employed by Adra Technologies, an offshoot of Fairmart.com, and they use common infrastructure. They'll typically use Ringba.com and ETITEL for their phone numbers, again shared with their main business, Fairmart.com. And once they have scammed people, they will follow up on these scams with other ones. They will claim that there are yet more hackers or problems on people's PCs in order to get yet more money out of their victims. They will pretend to be other companies like Amazon and Delta Airlines in order to extract as much money as possible. 
So as Lalit goes into the side office to recollect his mobile phone, his company, together with hundreds of others in the Kolkata and Delhi districts, will be undertaking the same sort of scams day in, day out. And it's only when the police in India get serious about this sort of crime will something be done about it. The portal for cybercrime reporting needs to be fixed, and any complaints need to be followed up on. I can provide lots of intelligence for other similar scam call centres. But until this action happens, people here like Luke or Lalit as he's really called, will be free to do these scams as often as he likes. And not only will he make money, but his boss Amit will make money. So as we watch him leave the scam call centre, let's hope that some good at least comes from this set of videos. I certainly intend to expose these scammers for what they do, and if you wish to support me, there is a link to my Patreon channel below. This is never compulsory, I'll always make these videos free, but any support you can give me is most welcome. The very last part of this video series will cover what happened whenever all of the videos went live and the UK documentary went out. There will be a link in the description to all the previous parts of this video and this new one when it's available. Finally, thank you again for your continued support and see you on the next video.